And welcome back, everybody. We have got our second race for the night. Our last match of losers round three. Joseph Joestar, 3-1-6. Wearing off against Plywood. I'm Proof Rock. I'm back again for race number two, and I'm joined by the winner of our previous race, Nick R.P. Green. Thank you very much. Good to, uh, good to be here. This is going to be an awesome race. Absolutely. <laughs> Plywood coming off a uh, victory against me in his his previous round. Uh, Jojo coming off a win against Haustis. Seven and eight seeds to get here. Um, let's see. Haven't taken a look at their, their PBs yet. Joe's got a 54-44. And Plywood has a 53-28. So I think it's about a minute... 15 separate the, separating them, but I'm also not sure if that's a Merrill or an Otacon run for, for Joe. I think it might actually be a Merrill run. Joe's definitely had a Merrill run where if it had been an Otacon run, it would have been like a massive PB for him. I think that was the one. It was it was him versus Blue Metal. They do, both did Merrill, and I think he... You're right. It, was, it would have been like a 52-30 or, or something like that. So I think... All things considered, Joe might actually have a slightly better kind of league PB uh, than Plywood. But not much separates them. Anything can happen. Uh, very easy for us to see separation with a lot of the early kind of boss fights. I mean, looking at the stats, Plywood also has the <laughs> Plywood also has the better average. But again, that is partly because Joe has had some some marrow runs. So it, it this really is going to be a close race. Like the the seeding may suggest that that Plywood has the has the edge here, but I really really don't think that that is the case. Um, so do not do not count Joe out at all. This is um, really going to be a very very close and interesting race to watch. The, uh, the chat there do believe that Plywood is going to take it, though. That is quite a big swing uh, on the betting in Plywood's favor. All right, so as they approach the helipad. Yeah, it looks to be three to five second kind of difference just between the feeds here. Keep that in mind as we go forward. And Joe taking the interesting north route there. And not a lot of runners usually take. Interesting that he uh, he wants to grab the chaffs. Uh, it's also worth noting here that uh, Joe's opted to go for a, a tuxedo save. Plywood just using the the standard save. Uh, can tell well, unless unless they were telling fibs. Um, they did say just before they got started that they were planning on doing an Otacon run, but you never know. That could have been uh, just a fallers and, and trickers later. So we'll see. Joe, of course, is very, very famous for always wanting to save Merrill in every circumstance ever. Yeah, interesting that Plywood here, he's, he's opting just to... Well, he might have changed it there, but for most of that crawl, he opted instead of to kind of straighten his angle out, he just kept his his view kind of where it, where it was. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that'll be any kind of time loss or if it's actually time gained versus you know having to fiddle with your camera they were both well ahead of the guards who uh, you're trying to beat by doing that uh, it's quite important to note there when when the runners are mashing the the weapon switch to to quickly equip and unequip that weapon it's not just to go faster it's also by going faster you um miss one of the guard patrols so if you weren't to do that you'd come out and you'd have to deal with one of the guards 
All right, soon going to see our first bit of real action. Uh, we'll get to see if either of these runners manage to do the SOCOM roll. Yeah, I believe Vermillion, I think Vermillion executed it last race, and I think you oh, were nice. a little off. I I just didn't didn't hit X quickly enough to to um, after I unpaused, so I just turned around and walked into the door. I've so so far only got it in a run once. I can do it in practice, but for some reason, getting it in a run is uh, a nightmare for me. See how these runners kind of set it up. I think your Vermillion kind of showed two of the different ways you can do it. There's a there's a setup where you kind of put snakes back up against the the wall of the door, and it looks like that's what Plywood's opting for, uh, and what Nick opted for as well. There's another setup where you kind of uh, go up against the west wall and use some punches to kind of put you in the right position. Joe's kind of doing that. He's not doing the punches, but he's doing the set up with his uh his back facing away from the wall. Let's see. Why was guy was successful? And Joe not successful. So that is going to give Plywood just a very slight lead here. Mel was really nice there with uh, helping Plywood out, taking out, just took out one of those guards for him. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think Plywood forgetting a little bit that the grenade was coming, and then, yep. Mm hmm. Ooh. That's what I was afraid would happen. Didn't actually lose that much time from it, though, because interestingly, while most of these guards, like, they come in waves, and it's based off of once you. There's a timer that kind of starts once you finish the first wave, and then the, the next wave is set to come in after you only after you defeat that wave. But I believe the final wave, those last two, um, doesn't really matter when you kill the grenade guy. Like, you can kill him early or late. Uh, those two are going to come in at the same time regardless, essentially. So, mm -hmm. didn't really lose a lot of time there, because Meryl knocked out the, the grenade guard after the grenade came out, and Flywood was basically up by the time the other two came. <laughs> Did you just say grenade guy? Another grenade guy, but no, uh, no chasm filled with tentacles <laughs> with a lately and conveniently placed bridge. You have no idea what we're on about, guys. Go and play on metal. Do yourself oh, a favor. I haven't finished it yet. I'm still in chapter four, but I am just so. So pleased with the game so far. Uh, Plywood is very low on health. He um, he took a lot of damage from that C4, but it doesn't look like it's going to cause him any problems, and it doesn't. Yeah, Joe also low on health, but has his rations equipped, so he doesn't have to worry about dying. And it looks like it was a little bit of a cleaner Ocelot for Joe. I would say so. Uh, did, did notice there that Ocelot actually shot the pillar that he was hiding behind. Yeah. I've never seen that before. One of the uh, one of the greatest marksmen in the entire world, and he shot the pillar directly in front of him. Good job, Ocelot. All right, let's see these guys fumble through the the so uh, the codec. Not too bad. From both of them there. Because Plywood here has already left the uh, already left Armory South. Okay. So he's gonna be slightly ahead. So I'd say I'd say Plywood's probably got about somewhere between five and ten second lead here. Probably closer to ten. I was confused for a second. I didn't realize Plywood made his uh, codec call with Merrill coming out of there, and so I thought they were a lot closer, and I was like, wait, <laughs> how? Where did it... Lightwood coming up on the laser. Let's see what strategy he will opt for. 
playing it safe. A little bit of safer there. A little bit different from what we saw the other two rudders do with, uh... With, yeah, basically did what Joe's doing with the roll, and then taking out all three. Yeah. So we saw the first two runners do, but Joe did it a little, little quicker. He was able to do it from one standing position rather than resetting. Yeah, that was really nice from Joe there. And yeah, unless you're unless you're like super comfortable with it, it it's usually safer just to go with that. It's it doesn't save you that much time, but getting it wrong will lose you a heck of a lot of time. But they are pretty close here because I remember they did have a a difference in their feeds when they first started, and I I think that difference is pretty much the same still, if maybe a little bit in, in plywood's favor. Good. Oh, plywood, plywood missed the first shot on Gunner Two. Oh, he did. Joe did not. And so Ply's having to go for the backup here. Goes back up to the ledge, waits Stuff for like that. the the gunner to come back up. And uh, yep, Joe has now overtaken and takes the leads. Oh, this gunner taking some interesting. Oh, Ply just can't quite find the shot. And then he's got to swap. Oh, he's got to go to Russians. Oh, the gunner's just juking him. Oh, he's just not. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. I th the oh. rain. I think it was the rain, but it almost looked like the gunner was just like, like leaning and like dodging shots. Oh. Uh, solid spider sneak. Thank you very much for the tier one sub. Congratulations on your three month streak. Right, well, so... you guys wanted a fun race to watch. This is going to be interesting to see if Plywood can pull this back. Obviously, there's so much time, so much time to go. Yeah, this is this is not a done deal by any means. But uh, every every single boss here is going to be critical for for Plywood. To, to try and catch up as as much as he can. Very important for Joe to stay clean and try to make sure he doesn't give Plywood a whole lot of opportunity to catch up. Of course, there are different strats that the runners can use for, for different bosses. So uh, I know that Plywood's very good with Ninja at doing the um, the punch punch. Nikita roll, uh, sorry, uh, punch Nikita roll to to skip one phase. So that's something that might be in Plywood's favor if if Joe doesn't go for that. Um, then there is Mantis, which uh, Akuma in chat is saying that uh, Plywood does have the the faster Mantis strat as well. So I think for Joe here, he's just gonna want to keep his cool and just you know do what he knows and just just try and keep the momentum going. And hopefully for him, that'll be enough. Oh, he takes that hit from a little too close to Ninja. And he's a little too close again and gets... No, Joe! No, Joe gets... Oh, he didn't... I don't he know if didn't he... didn't keep the combo going. I don't know if he forgot to... Like, if he is... Biz... He was... Maybe he was button pressing and he just got a mispress or... Or maybe he just wasn't thinking and thought with getting hit he could just double punch again and be fine. Well, it is very oh, likely. Oh, I think that he the, is. Is he gonna re? Is he resetting? He's opting to reset. Oh no. Honestly, it, it might have been the better idea to reset there with how much health Ninja had left. Well, this is gonna see the lead flip back again, um, and un unfortunately for Joe, Plywood is gonna take a much bigger lead than Joe had on him. That is the first death on Ninja, I believe we've seen all tournament. Not a real death, obviously, he killed himself, but still, this first first continue we've seen on Ninja. Oh, and Plywood hasn't managed the uh, the final combo correctly, and he does go into hide and seek as well. Uh, but he does just need oh. one hit. Oh. So, uh, so okay, the the lead that 
the lead look plywood's going to get here isn't quite as as big as it could have been, but still reasonably hefty. Yes, both runners with some nerves here, it seems, on, on Ninja. Really nice combo into a into a roll to finish there. So it's, if you can if you can do it, trying to roll north after you land your last combo before this cutscene is is really important. Just gets you uh, shaves a, a second or so. And Three ninja. Joseph defeats Marvel's The Vision. All right, so 15-15 uh, is when Plywood regained control there. Yeah, I was timing from the from the Merrill Kodak, and it looks like, yeah, it's about 30 seconds, not counting the, uh, the feed delay. Yep, 30 seconds is about right. Joe's still what? still opting for the uh for the shot on on Mario there. Hey, that's that's his we we already know that that's Joe's RNG manipulation. He took a interesting path there. He really didn't want to roll over that first guard. He did not. Trying to be respectful, I guess. <laughs> See, this is where now, after shooting Mario, Joe gets a perfect lottery roll. As uh, Joe is yeah. Joe is well known for landing that lottery roll reasonably consistently. Yeah. All right, Plywood setting up for Ninja again. This is another area that could see some more time swap hands depending on which strategies they go for uh, i'm going to assume they're both going to go for couch strap uh, it just depends on how quickly they they get started plywood tends to go for the the sort of ankle shot where he waits for ninja to start his attack and then shoots his leg as he sort of cocks it around him uh, and we'll see what joe goes i'm not too sure what joe tends to go for I'm going to go for couch. Angle might have been a little... Okay. Ply Plywood didn't duck yet. He's going for the... Yep. That's the... Uh... Sort of back shot. Looks like... Uh... Looks like he was trying to set up for Chairless, but decided against it. Why couldn't I read your mind? Yeah, that's a good there. phase one. Skip. That is perfect damage for the skip. Uh, Joe has ducked, so he's going for the uh, for the quick shot. Lands it, gets the punch, and doesn't quite get Mantis into uh, into the right position there. But he's set up really nicely for the uh, for the face skip as well. More beautiful, really really good phase ones from both runners. I would almost got the quick two shot there to end it, but not quite. Let's see how Joe does. This this looks like both both of them are on pretty much the same pace with uh, with this mantis fight here. So this really isn't unless unless something goes horribly wrong for Joe here. This really isn't going to change much. Right. With Plywood going through the caves now. See how he does with the dogs. See if he's good with the doges. <laughs> Got both. Oh, oh, he, he aimed at the papa, but he managed to swap his uh, swap his aim over. Oh. oh, that's right. I was like, why does he have his SOCOM on previous? And I was like, ah, yes, he uses SOCOM on Meryl. Some writers just opt to use the M9 and uh, saves you some menuing and, and all that, but I guess it is safer to use SOCOM? 
I don't know. It is uh, you can you can um, shoot Meryl a couple of times with the Socom, whereas you can only shoot her once with the M9. So as you say, the downside there is you do have to menu over to the Socom in order to do it. Yeah, I've never. I mean, I say this now, and my ne very next run, it's probably going to be an issue. I've never had issues with getting Meryl there. Like I just you just use M9, hit her, roll right through. We won't, we won't talk about my race from last week. I would shoot in a few shots there. I think it's maybe to draw the the dogs into a favorable position. Oh! Ooh, he shot the dog. So, that was so close. That was he that was really nice. He put a bullet in that doggo. <laughs> All right, no, no doggo hits so far. Come on, Joe, keep it a clean sweep for you both. I would like to propose an immediate five-second time loss to anyone who shoots a dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's good. Joe, make Peter proud. Oh, could we see? Could we see a clean sweep? from both runners on all three caves. Well, we won't now, now that you've said it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, commentator's curse. Bit of a high five there we missed from the runners. In the commander's room. Uh, notice that uh, Plywood didn't opt to grab the extra ammo, so he's going to be and joe does so plywood clearly a little more confident with his with his aiming in in this fight oh 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 he's good he's fine there's some really nice dodging around that dog there yeah it was a good good movement like there he knew if he just like took like a wide turn he could kind of manipulate the the dog into kind of missing him did not swap to his psg1t on his uh coming out of there and she is just hiding oh that was a body shot all well, right it was well he, he's kind of he can afford one body shot right as long as, as long as the the rest of these shots are headshots he'll be fine she is it's, not being she, kind. yeah she is just sticking sticking behind good shot and really good Con considering what he was up against there he he did that as fast as he could. Absolutely. It, it was a, it was a slow fight, but that was had nothing to do with um, with Plywood's shooting there. Uh, and Joe being afforded a little bit of a nice oh gets the yeah, the headshot no, there, it, and that's, that was impressive. That is so good from Joe. But again, that's that is completely down to the RNG there. Both runners did that pretty much as quickly as they could with the RNG they were given. So that is going to give Joe a slight edge towards Plywood. Obviously, he's still, he's still somewhat behind. They are going into... into their prison, where they will, getting out of here, try to... try to do it as fast as they can, looking at the, um... looking at their stats. It looks like Joe has uh, gone for Bonk twice, successful each time. In his most recent race against Houstis, however, he went for the for the easy skip successfully. Uh, Plywood, I believe, has gone for Bonk all three times and has only failed it once, I believe. Yes, in his loss to Akuma, he failed his Bonk. And that, looking at the difference in that race of 38 seconds, that might have just been the difference. This bit really can separate the men from the boys. There, will See what they go for. And they're very close together, so it's not like you can get, uh, you know, I guess Joe might have a, a little bit of an advantage in time to, like, you know, check the race if he's watching and, and see what Plywood does, but it's it's really close. Like, I, I don't know if he's, if he's honestly even going to have enough time to effectively do that. All 
right, we've got one Johnny ready for the loo. Second Johnny, ready for the loo. Both Johnny's stomachs apparently in their butts. <laughs> Thought it's funny. He's like, "Oh, my stomach!" And he is just full on grabbing his cheeks. So it's like, what? It's a it's a wonderfully delivered line. <laughs> you really you good. can really you can really hear the the desperation in Johnny's voice. Yeah, it's just like, it's like you're there with him. Like, you hear that and you're like, yeah, Johnny, I know, I've been there. And you just think back to a time when you had similar distress and you're like, yeah, that's real. What the hell? Oh, dear. Oh, I love this game. <laughs> Plywood coming out of his cell. Let's see what he goes for here. Gonna... Oh, go for the... I don't know if he meant to do that. It... Playing it safe. Maybe he, know, maybe he knows that Joe's uh, ahead of him. So, I'm uh, sorry. Maybe he knows that he's ahead of Joe. Um, he's got it. Um, he's got the the trick correctly there. He, he exited the room with his um, suit on, so uh, he has managed it correctly. Joe gets but shot kind of... once before his bonk, and he. Mm, yep, that angle I knew oh. wasn't going to be good. He just, yeah, he started away from. He had Johnny a bit too far over to the left, so he started his run just slightly too late. That is unfortunately going to give Plywood a, a big lead again. Ply, Ply was correct to, to just play it safe. Go for the uh, go for the slightly easier strat. Uh, and that is going to pay off for him. And of course, at this point, it, it doesn't look like they're that far behind but remember the the reason for that is because both runners are going to have tried one succeeding and one failed uh, to skip the cutscene and codec call that occurs in the underground passage so plywood's just going to run straight past it joe is going to have to sit and go through it and it's it's about a 40 second time loss for that room <laughs> Joe, Joe opting to uh, to get a hold up on his way past. Yeah, I think won't get quite the forty second difference with Bywood going for easy skip. I think it's maybe closer to twenty five or thirty kind of separation between them using those two strats with the failed roll and with the successful easy skip. But but yeah, still not. 25 30 seconds on top of what plywood already had it's tough to come back from there's a uh, there's a good point there from from house about uh, joe going for all dog tags we've seen these um, these friendly agreements to save meryl w when are we going to get a race where the the runners do a friendly agreement to do all dog tags like why is tyler not demanding this for from every single person he's racing against it's funny because Tyler's, I'm pretty sure, pretty much in charge of logistics and scheduling. So I think he would be the last person that would act. I think he would feel conflicted. <laughs> you know, he would be like, well, I love all dog tags, but like, I'm trying to run a tournament and y'all are. <laughs> okay. I forget, I forget how much, uh, how much time all dog tags. It's not that much in, um, in very easy, if I recall. Right. Assuming you uh you know where they all are and you know uh, and everything of that and you don't miss any and because because that would be my issue I've never just done an all dog tags run so just knowing where they all are and I'd be holding up probably every single guard I saw and taking way too much time. The current the current world record for very easy all dog tags by Blue Metal is uh, eleven minutes. Yeah, 11 minutes slower than his world record in just standards, uh, not not all dog tags. However, there hasn't been an all dog tags run 
in quite a while and there have been some new developments so there's a good chance that the the all dog tags world record is pretty much there for the taking at the moment yeah i was gonna say uh, 11 minutes but it's probably been a while and there's probably several several strats that could be implemented it also may not be a i'm not looking at the board but it's probably it's not run as much and you can probably you know like you said even now but even before that blue might have gotten the world record with a bit of a lackluster run from blue standard so yeah who knows it might be uh might be right for the taking if anyone uh, if anyone's feeling up for it you know where to go and on a completely unrelated subject i'm gonna be right back <laughs> no problem <laughs> I've got I've got this tower climb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ply just uh, struggling there a little bit with uh, with the timing of that stun grenade. It looks like Joe's using M9 and stuns. Oh, Ply that was nice. Joe Joe completely avoided the shot from that first guard, which is not easy to do. Oh, and he gets shot by the next one, unfortunately. Oh, and then get shot by the next one. Yeah, there's about 15 floors to separate them with Ply going to the last floor and up the ladder. JoJo's still making his way up to floor 18 now. At this point, there's, we're not really going to see any time difference opportunities. Oh, JoJo's having to, to quickly spin around and take that guard out uh we're not gonna see really any major unless 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 one of the runners does something weird in in comms tower b we're not gonna see any time difference here until hind yeah both runners have pretty much gotten this repel section down to a science so joe cutting a little too sharp there before the ladder I suppose there is still walkway as well. Walkway can cause some problems. And uh, that's a really fast repel from from Ply. He didn't get hit by the uh, steam, if I if I saw that correctly. I don't think he did. Okay. Interesting. I I might start doing that myself, with a. Uh... Jojo switching to his, uh, getting his chaffs menu there, so he doesn't have to do it later on the walkway. He can just do chaff, and then I assume so calm is my what he swaps to. He might do PSG1T for the walkway. Oh, oh, Joe, Joe went for a very different, different way of getting onto that, uh, that first girder. Joe, what are you doing? Oh, he was he was waiting for the steam, and unfortunately, that just that wasn't. It didn't really play out in his favor, so he's just gonna have to go straight down. Those steams, uh, RNG. The steam the steam is RNG, um, I but I don't I don't think that waiting for the steam to disappear is quicker than just tanking it. Right. Especially if it, I think for his thing, it wasn't already there, and he was just like waiting for it to come and then go, and that really lost him some time. Really good PSG one shooting from him there. I did notice his menuing, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do any stair gliding here. Oh wait, that's right. It, the the door takes your stuff away. I forgot. Takes your current equip off. Plywood using his chaffs, making his way up. To throw another one here. And he'll have another one to throw around floor 21. And he should be up his tower with no damage taking, I think. Uh, Joe, on the other hand, has uh, swapped to his rations. He didn't pick up any chaff grenades after the ninja fight. Um, so I think it's that's a, a deliberate choice on his part to just tank his way through these... Oh no! He's got no, four. he has got. No, he has got chaff grenades. I wonder why he swapped to his rations then. Unless, right. it, unless he's concerned about having. Raven. Yeah, unless he's concerned about having them ready for the um for the hind D. Yeah, but that's his hinds aren't. No, his yeah. hinds are good enough where he shouldn't be that scared. 
on the subject of Hind Dumb. Here comes Plywoods. Oh, Joe picked him up at the heliport. That's where he gets his other two. Oh, yeah. Because, no, yeah, I was saying, I was like, no, he definitely didn't get those coming out of Ninja. But for some reason, he likes he likes the heliport ones instead of the Ninja ones. I, I think you, you save more time by just going a little bit out of your way for the Ninja ones. But Joe's, uh, I, I think it's marginal, you know, and, and I think it's, you know, Joe's opting to just do something that's more comfortable and save time that way. Seems that Plywood's just ha Plywood is here just having to kind of brute force his way through stage one. It didn't look like the um, behind went into a particular pattern that we're used to seeing. Uh, yeah, but a little early on that shot. Right. I've noticed sometimes after eat this, uh, even though you're look you you're looking at the behind before eat this it will just make Snake look to, like, the left or the right. And I'm wondering if there's anything that causes that? I've got no I've got no idea, because you're, you're absolutely right. Sometimes Snake will just look in a completely different direction from where he was looking before. Um, and it's it can be very annoying. Oh, that's I a nice blind, blind shot from... Ooh, from missed there. that. I think... Joe might have been shot behind going in to eat this. Uh, both Blue and Wall Guy suggesting that uh, you need to not move your stick around during that cutscene. I, I'm not sure that's uh, that's what's happening because I I know in my runs like I will be looking at the hind, I'll like press to shoot or something, but I'll keep it on the hind. Like I'm looking straight at the hind. I don't touch my stick. And yet, Snake still looks like 90 degrees to the left. Right, I'm with Plywood. I think there are... Ooh, that was... Okay, Gary. But I think there are certain times, even when you're not holding your stick, like, because that... Like, that's kind of like a no-duh solution, like, easy. Like, yeah, obviously, if I'm, if I'm holding my stick and it's going left, then that's... Oh, and Joe here is just struggling to get those second shots off. But he gets that one. It's nice. Oh, and Liquid decided to just sort of pop up for a second and give him a cheeky... Oh, I'm coming up! No, I'm going down. What? Okay, he's done, but that was um, that was definitely a cleaner fight from Plywood. His, his lead is going to increase here. And, of course, at this point in the run, Joe is now running out of time to to save time oh ply missing one of the uh, one of the grenades there Joe opts in to grab some extra Extra ammo. Oh, Ply's really struggling with um, with landing these grenades. That one, yeah, that one hit. You got that one though. Yeah, I was about to say. Uh... Joe was just a little late on his throws, I think. Ooh. Getting the timing of a roll going down the stairs is to to get shot is um, isn't easy. Ideally, you want to be you want to be rolling just a little just a little earlier than than Joe did. You can sort of get you know like a couple of frames into your roll and then get shot and say stood up. Um, and that's actually a time save. It's just not easy to do, and you're also going to tank a lot of damage doing it. And uh, if you tank too much damage going down here, and you're not going to be able to see for those guards, or at least you're going to have to equip a ration to do so. I 
have wood coming into wolf too. She was uh hiding quite a bit on her first iteration with plywood. We'll see how she how much hide and seek she plays this time. Just doesn't quite land that first shot. There we go. And he's off. Mm. She's going to hide behind that. Ah. Left side is... Uh, left side is much meaner than right side. There's more places for her... Well, there's less places for her to go, so there's more, more opportunities for her to hide. But he's done very well there. That is... Um, Absolutely not the kind of wolf fight that Joe would have wanted to see Plywood have. No, not not enough mistakes. It's not over yet, but there are not many opportunities for for Joe to to make a comeback here. Um and we, we say this quite often, once you get to this point in the run, it's less about you playing well and more about waiting for your opponent to make a mistake. Yep, as uh, as, Li as, as Liquid says often, not yet, Snake. It's not over yet. <laughs> Joe just not... Joe opting to just take the wide-angle view of Sniper Wolf fight. It's working out for him. She was being a bit mean at, at first, but um, he's managed to recover quite well. I kind of like that too, because I too often when I zoom in too much and I'm like, you know, I'm anticipating Sniper Wolf coming coming up on the left side of that snow hill. And if you're zoomed in too much, you can't see her like juke you sometimes. And she'll just go right back where she came from and you're like sitting there waiting and like, uh, where are you? So that wide angle view, I think, can avoid that a little more. There's a nice little crotch shot from... Uh... From plywood on that second guard. No, he struggled, struggled a little, little bit with the third guard, but not too bad. I, I do now much prefer just absolutely blasting. Just don't go into first person. Just, just sit there, hold, uh, hold B, and just mash A. Just take those guards out nice and quick. But if you can, if you can do well at headshotting, then it is quicker. Uh, we'll see what option Joe goes for. Yeah, looks like he. Oh no, a little bit of both. That seemed a, a little bit improvised, but uh, did the job. And we see the usual smiley face. Just as Ply goes into Raven. No, not really much to, uh, to say about Raven here. Get a bit close to him. Time out your stinger shots. Should be no problem. Tank with ration. If you even need the ration. I was about to say, if you're quick enough and you have enough health, sometimes you don't even need it. Plywood there does does end up using the ration. Oh, Joe, it's not over yet. Not yet, Joe. It's not over yet. You never know. Ply could have three rope deaths in a row. Though, having said that, I do believe we've only seen one rope death. Uh, oh, no, I stand corrected. We have seen two rope deaths so far this tournament. Isn't that right, Akuma? And, and Vermillion. Oh, right, Vermillion just did it. I was like, wait, who was the second one? 
Wait, that wasn't in the race against me just now, was it? It absolutely was. Oh, that's wrong. I did not know that. Oh, yes, that's so yes, wrong. Did. <laughs> oh, I mean, at God. that point, it was it was pretty much over. Like you were, I think he was just coming down to get his pal key, and you were like coming up from getting your cold key, and yeah, it was just it was very much the. Uh, I feel like Vermilion probably felt like it was very much salt in the wound of like, yes, I've lost. <laughs> and then now I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? All right. Joe finishing his reasonably clean Raven fight as well. There is there is a good bit of bit of distance between these two runners here. Just noticed that Plywood just take his calls as they came, or he did. Yes. Interesting. I don't know if he, he just forgot or if he prefers. Um, do you believe it is considered quicker to take all, all three calls at the same time? Uh, someone is like Joe here. As soon as uh, as soon as they gain control, they will uh, they'll immediately open the the codec and make the call. Um. Oh, plywood opting for. That, that, oh, plywood. That doesn't oh! work. So he he opted for the he opted for the uh, for the different grab where he drops down to the drops down to the ledge rather than the rope, but he still missed it. Wow, that's not Burn enough it. for Joe. It's not enough for Joe to catch up, but there we go. Is that okay? That's slower, right? It it is slower, but I'm going to assume it's safer than than the rope grab. But you could probably just mash and and get that. But he certainly didn't. The other advantage with the rope is that as soon as you hit the floor after the rope, you can cook a grenade and immediately kill the rat with the grenade um, cooked at that time. And you're going to see that here from from Joe, who does not get a rope death. This is, this is still close. And he got a good pal swap. Yeah, he's, he doesn't. He's not gonna have to press. Nice. I think for that one. He did anyways, but. But uh, for for plywood there, we already know that plywood prefers to to shoot the rat with the with the socom. He doesn't he doesn't do the grenade strat anyway. Um, um, the only the only time difference there is obviously he's got to walk to that ledge and then walk back from that ledge. Um, but clearly he must he must have thought that that was going to be the safer option and unfortunately it still didn't play out for him a little high five from the runners here so that is that has dropped plywood's lead quite significantly yeah because it's one thing to take a rope death um but you know the time it takes to get to that second jump and that extra added time that he had to do twice uh oof oh Every, every single little drop is... Oh, he missed his there a little bit. Yeah, if Joe just keeps playing clean here, and if Plywood keeps, uh... I don't know if it's nerves or, or what, but if it he keeps with these flubs, he may not be in the lead for very long. Is that going to be a third? Nope. I thought he would go for third person there because I thought. I, he I think he it. was lined up for it. Yeah. I still, I still don't think. Like, plywood getting a good liquid whilst Joe getting like a perfect lottery roll. I still don't think that's going to be enough to switch it. Here, I think Joe still needs something. I think you're right. Like he's gonna need like plywood to have to pick up some stinger ammo, or I need a little extra. Of course, there is still the IGT. We have seen ply dropping a few frames. He did mention in the chat earlier that he'd swapped from uh, Direct 3D 12 down to 11, um, and he thinks that was causing causing a few frame drops. So there could be a bit of a discrepancy with the with the IGT. 
And there was that initial kind of few seconds between them when they started. Cool. Joe Joe not getting any any drop deaths here. Uh, so that is a death for both runners in uh which is it's it's unusual to see this late into uh into the tournament. Mm-hmm. But it happens. As uh, as Vermillion and I were saying at the end of our race, this this game punishes you hard. When something goes wrong, you will lose a lot of time. Maybe a. About 25 seconds between them right now. Yeah, and a big thank you to Mr. R. Speedy for the uh, for the prime sub. Congratulations on your three month streak. Nice codec there from from Ply. As long as your timing's right there, as soon as you, as soon as Snake presses his back up against the door, you can immediately answer the call from Arcom. Assuming, of course, you called him early, just like Joe's doing here. And I would spacing these. Oh. Spacing those stinger shots out really nicely. He is not giving Joe any room to breathe at all. I can finally die. After Zanzibar land, I was taken Joe opting for a closer spot. Well, early in the first shot. I'm truly dead. It's no good. I can't do it. In a world it's no good. I can't do it. Soon. Oh. Got the lock on on the other on the, the gun turret, I think, but it still went to the dome. That was really interesting. It's it's really odd. Uh, the the way Joe does that fight is um, you you really don't see any other runners doing it. And there, of course, is our obligatory follow Apache smash on Twitter. Yeah, Jokas does a lot of interesting. Quirky stuff with his TT his TTS runs, you know. He he saves Meryl. He gets those chaffs. He does Rex weird. He shoots Mario. Oh, yeah, forgot about that. <laughs> it was a good phase two from Ply. It looks like looks like Joe's gonna follow suit. Whoa, really nice. All right. <laughs> Jam Chunk from Ply. Setting up for a lottery roll. Ooh. Ooh. It's not it's not a full lottery roll, but it's a good one. Third of one or something. Now he's electing just to do punch punch kicks. Oh, now he's got him in the punch punch lock. Yeah. This he should be fine, I think, with the, the edging. Punch kick. Oh, he decided to play it safe. I think he would have been fine. Oh! Joe. Couple, couple of, uh, yeah, a couple of small lottery rolls from him there. But oh, I... I think that got some damage off of that, but yeah, fall did not help. He's got him in his stun lock, but then he... Oh, he's just, he just oh, needs to get him liquid. into that final phase. Oh, and Liquid just, just walked off the just edge. Danced off the side. Oh. Mm, having some trouble here with the uh, unlock. <laughs> Opt into uh, to just duck down to miss that. that I like that strat. I think I'm gonna start doing that. <laughs> but sometimes I have uh, trouble with the uh, doing the circles. Uh, as plywood gets in and starts shooting those barrels, get shot. Yeah, it's it's not unwinnable for Joe here, but. It, it's all but unwinnable. Uh, 
on a on a harder difficulty there'd yeah. be there might be some room but unless unless plywood unless plywood dies I, I i think i think that's that's all there is to it now and on very easy it's so unlikely um there is as i said earlier the the igt discrepancy if there is any discrepancy in the igt then that could cause uh could cause an upset we have seen it happen before but i've not seen i've not seen enough like frame drops or anything from either runner here to to warrant warrant that kind of discrepancy it's still a close race it's still quite close it's just one of those things with this run it's like it's kind of a essentially an auto scroller at this point i mean if it were real real close just a few seconds separating them then yes absolutely this could even even up to 10 seconds i think separating them this could be very close but i think once you get into the 20 plus seconds it's it's tough this is this is really fun to watch from from players he goes for he tries to do all of this fight in in third person it does and it's it's cinematic but it's still like i don't know i i think i think you're better off with your first person view one more shot and plywood is uh, uh plywood plywood's done with the game uh i in game timer stops when the uh, the first bit of historical information pops up yeah, Joe. Joe really isn't in the grand scheme of things. Considering everything that happened, Joe really, really has caught up quite significantly. That that death from uh, from Plywood in inside the underground base really, really evened it out a bit more. Uh, but that is Plywood's uh, Plywood's IGT there. Fifty six thirty four. And a final shot from Joe. Joe is done. Just a few cutscenes and the codec to skip. Uh, Precious Roy, thank you very much for the eleven-month streak on uh, on your sub there. Very kind of you. And that's Joe's run. About 45, 40, 45 seconds separating them. So, unless there is any major upset with the uh, with the IGT here, we we should be reasonably safe to to say that that plywood is going to go through. Uh, and that therefore means that uh, Plywood is going to be facing, if I can find the schedule, Plywood, uh, Plywood is going to be facing off against Tyler tomorrow in the, uh, in the next round of the Losers Bracket. Hello? Hello, Plywood. Hi. You try you trying to get your credits to match up with Joe's? Uh I'm I couldn't hear you very well, so I had to like adjust uh. my uh <laughs> volume controls. So I was like letting go of tab because I can't just be holding tab while I'm <laughs> doing that. <laughs> that was well, a we... funky race to put it nicely. <laughs> To put it another way, I was plus one fifteen. You, you want to? But tell I us did about... learn how to appropriately do the backup strat in underground base. You you just take the the early drop, and it's that simple. <laughs> it was uh, it was a very interesting moment. You had you had quite a significant lead on Joe, and it, it wasn't enough, but it really did then bring that that end game together quite a bit. Uh, we see there your in-game time, 54-44. Yeah, I was just trying to sign, seal, and deliver it, but then I was like, oh, that was uh, 
I didn't quite, I was like, I'm not too sure where this drop is. I probably should have just looked in FPV as I was approaching just to make sure. Because <laughs> I was like, uh, this drop's not going to work halfway through, but that's too late. I was just thinking back to the, uh, the prison escapes as well, and how you, you went for easy skip, uh, Joe tried to go for the roll and failed it, and yeah, just thinking about how much closer it could have been if, if maybe Joe went for the skip as well, or if he'd even gotten the, if he'd executed the roll correctly. Yeah, I intentionally didn't go for it because I knew I was ahead, so I knew it was, it was Joe's moment. I didn't have to do anything, so... And I was screwing it up in practice before this race, so I was like, "Yeah, not, you know, if I have to, I will." But wasn't really. Wait, can you guys hear me? Today. Yep, we can I hear you. Oh, my mic was muted. Whoops. <laughs> um, yeah, GG's, dude. Um, man, that ninja fight was probably the one thing I never expected to happen. I thought I still had him in the sequence, shot his blade to play it safe, and still triggered phase two, and just had to immediately you know, game over to redo it, and um, I knew Playa was ahead in the uh, medical room, so I I felt good about the role going in, but obviously since it failed, it definitely made my chances a lot more uh, difficult, but I think you died to the rope fall, uh, just for me I, to uh, chat. I died to the backup strat, because I didn't know where to drop. <laughs> I went for the backup strat. And I, oh, really? I, I went too far to the right. You need to, like, it's like the immediate drop, so good to know you just once you go to that catwalk you just immediately drop and you're in line so yeah i remember a wall guy was mentioning that to me on one of my streams about uh the backup uh fall because i was struggling to to get it that day i mean i still do um but yeah it seems like we traded the lead several times whether if it was our own choice or not but uh i think we put out a good race and you know hats off to you dude Expect the unexpected when you race Joseph Joe Star. That's that's what I say. You're a wild card, man. Yeah. Well, Joker. it's you know I I just try to have fun. You know, even if at the moment it's just like, oh come on, game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, good luck with Tyler and uh, yeah, thanks for uh, having me on here. Thank you for the race. Appreciate it. All right, and with that, I think we call it quit for today. Thank you so much, everyone, of course, for the commentators and the runners here for the next day of the Twin Snakes tournament at MGSR. We're going to call it quit for today, but we're already back tomorrow again with the next round of the Losers matches. So stay tuned, of course.